Good afternoon. I lit this before. So I got started without you. What do you think about that? Yan Wu Tin. Enlightenment. Right where you stand. Oh, I forgot to turn off the <laughs> enlightenment. Knowledge. Knowledge. I forgot something. Ah, I forgot to turn off the extra fan. Alright. Please, turn off. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Why isn't it turning off? Thank you. Alright. Here we go. Among the marvels of Buddhism, nothing surpasses the Zen school for experiencing direct, surpassing realization and reaching quick accord with transcendent wisdom. This is the pure, clean Zen of the supreme vehicle of those who come from thusness. It has been especially carried out on the outside of doctrine over, ever since Sukhumuni Buddha held up a flower on Spirit Peak and Mahakapasaya <laughs> I used to know how to say it. Maha Kashai Appa smiled. Shakyamuni entrusted him with the wondrous mind of Nirvana, the treasury of the eye of the correct teaching. The pure transmission of the mind seal continued throughout 27 generations in India until Bodhidharma came from the West to bring it to China. He pointed directly to the human mind to enable people to see their nature and become enlightened. Regardless of whether they are ordinary or sagely or far or near. When the basic capacity is attuned, you pass through to freedom in an instant. It does not take three incalculable eons. You immediately witness the original Buddha, which is perfect and complete and pure and wondrous. Therefore, to travel in the Sin School, you need a great capacity for the Dharma. You must establish your determination from the start and set out. Then you must come forth transcendent. This is what is called realizing Buddhahood right where you stand. Reigning in your thoughts and concentrating your awareness for a while, you no longer set up before and after. You experience the unborn. This is not obtained from anyone else. It is just a matter of bold and sharp practice on your own part. It is like cutting through a skein of thread. Then when one thread is cut, they are all cut. Your inherent spiritual awareness is instantly liberated. One moment you're an ordinary person, and the next you're a sage. Whether you intend it or not, the ordinary and the sagely are one thusness, embracing all of space with no more direction or location. Yang just said, How can you draw any comparisons to the uncreated state of absolute reality? Transcend directly to enter into the stage of those who realize thusness. At the assembly, where Buddha preached the Lotus Sutra, a Naga girl offered a pearl and immediately achieved a true awakening. Isn't this immediate realization of the wondrous fruit of enlightenment in the turn of a thought? This reality cannot be covered by the skies or held up by the earth. Space cannot contain it. It abides within all sentient beings and is the support upon which all of them rest. It has always been clean and naked. There is nowhere it does not pervade. People are unable to experience this true essence simply because they are hemmed in by emotional consciousness and separated from it by hearing and seeing, and because they falsely accept the perceived reflections of objects from mind itself and the gross physical elements as the real body. That is why the sages, with the power of their vows of compassion, have pointed out this true essence to people to enable all people with the basic capacity to turn the light around and reflect back so they can pick it out and witness it in its pure form. How about the pearl that the Naga girl offered to Buddha? Where is it right now? 
If you can take it up as soon as it's mentioned, then you will never go to the words to construct an understanding or make a nest in mental maneuvers and conceptual thoughts. Then it'll be no different from the undefiled world of Spirit Peak. I keep smelling burning wax and it's distracting me. Is it this? Yeah. I haven't even played with any wax. It just must be that. All right. Since time immemorial, we in the Zen school have only valued the, imp the very first mental moment, the very first statement, before thought is born, before sound comes forth, cut through directly. All at once, cut off the spiritual workings of the thousand sages and the spiritual talisman of the myriad sentient beings. Isn't this the essential wondrous realm of liberation and freedom, where you achieve great independence? Naaman Pang asked Mazao, Who is the one who does not keep company with the myriad things? Mazao said, When you can swallow up all the water in the West River in one gulp, I'll tell you. Many are the people who take the verbal evaluations of this public case interpreting it in terms of mind and environment, but they are far from accepting the design of Zen. You have to be made of cast iron. Only then can you go against the flow and experience transcendent realization. Then you will capsize the iron boat of Layman Pang and Mazao. When you arrive at last at the towering at the when you arrive at last at towering up like a wall miles high, you will finally know that there aren't so many things. Time waits for no one. All those with conditioned minds are as far from true reality as the sky is from the earth. Right now, if you cannot pass through the barrier, it is obviously because your mind has many serious attachments. If you can clear these away and reach the realm where there is no conditioned mind, all delusions and defilements and emotional habits will end, and all the obstructions created by conditioned knowledge and arbitrary views and intellectual understanding will be dissolved away. What else is there? This is why Lequan said that once freed from its conditioning, the ordinary mind is the way. But as soon as you produce a thought seeking to be ordinary, you've already turned away and missed it. This is the point that is most subtle and hardest to approach. Even immeasurably great people falter and hesitate when they get here. How much more so for those still in the stage of learning? You must strive with all of your might to bite through here and to cut off the conditioned habits of mind. Be like a person who has died the great death. And after your breath is cut off, then you come back to life. Only then do you realize that it is as open as empty space. Only then do you reach point where your feet are walking on the ground of reality. When you experience profound realization of this matter, you become thoroughly clear, and your faith becomes complete. You are free and at ease, and clean and clear through, not knowing anything, not understanding anything. As soon as anything touches you, you turn freely, with no more constraints, and without getting put anywhere. When you want to act, you act, and when you want to go, you go. There is no more gain or loss, or affirmation or denial. You encompass everything from top to bottom, all at once. How could it be easy to carry into practice, or even to approach this realm where there is no conditioned mind? Or how could it be easy? <laughs> you, you must be a suitable person to do so. And if you are not yet like this, you must put aside mind and body and immerse yourself in silent reflection until you are free from the slightest dependency. Keep watching, watching as you come, 
as you go. After a long time, you will naturally come to where, to cover heaven and earth, so that true reality appears ready-made wherever you touch. Before there was a natural born Shakyamuni Buddha, before there was a sponta there was a spontaneously so Maitreya Buddha. Who was it who understood while still in the womb? You must be quick to focus your energy. Time does not wait for people. Suddenly, in one bite, you will bite through, and nobody will be able to do anything about you. To succeed at this, a truly great person must reach the realm of self-realization, independence, and freedom. Make enlightenment your standard. Fundamentally, this great light is there with each and every person right where they stand. Empty, clear through, spiritually aware, all pervasive. It is called the scenery of the fundamental ground. Sentient beings and Buddhas are both inherently equipped with it. It is, perf is perfectly fluid and boundless, fusing everything within it. It is within your own heart and is the basis of your physical body and of the five clusters of form, sensation, conception, motivational synthesis, and consciousness. It has never been defiled or stained. And its fundamental nature is still and silent. False thoughts suddenly arise and cover it over and block it off and confine it within the six sense faculties and sense objects. Sense faculties and sense objects are paired off, and you get stuck and begin clinging and getting attached. If you grasp at all the various objects and scenes and produce all sorts of false thoughts and sink down into the toils of birth and death, unable to get liberation. Put an if in there that didn't belong in there. Just, right? Hmm. All the Buddhas and ancestral teachers awakened to this true source and penetrated clear through to the fundamental basis. They took pity on all the sentient beings sunk in the cycle of birth and death and were inspired by great compassion. So they appeared in the world precisely for this reason. It was also for this reason that Bodhidharma came from the West with a special practice outside of doctrine. The most important thing is for people of great faculties and sharp wisdom to turn the light of mind around and shine it back and clearly awaken to this mind before a single thought is born. This mind can produce all world transcending and worldly phenomena. When it is forever stamped with enlightenment, your inner heart is independent and transcendent and brimming over with life. I'm sorry. When it is forever stamped with enlightenment, your inner heart is independent and transcendent and brimming over with life. As soon as you arouse your conditioned mind and set errant thoughts moving, then you have obscured this fundamental clarity. If you want to pass through easily and directly right now, just let your body and mind become thoroughly empty. So it is vacant and silent, yet aware and luminous. Inwardly, forget all your conceptions of self. And outwardly, cut off all sensory defilements. When inside and outside are clear all the way through, there is just one true reality. Then, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and conceptual mind, form, sound, smell, flavor, touch, and conceptualized phenomenon, all of these are established based on that one reality. This one reality stands free, stands free of, and transcends all the myriad entangling phenomenon. The myriad phenomenon have never had any fixed characteristics. They are all transformations based on this light. If you can trust in this oneness, then one comprehend If you can trust in this oneness, then with one comprehended, all are comprehended. And with one illuminated, all are illuminated. Then, 
and whatever you do, it can all be indestructible, true essence of great liberation from top to bottom. You must awaken to this mind first, and afterward cultivate all forms of good. Haven't you seen this story? The renowned poet Bo Yi asked the bird, bird's nest monk, What is the way? The bird's nest monk said, Don't do any evils, do all forms of good. Bo Yi <laughs> said, Well, even a three-year-old could say this. And the bird's nest monk said, Though a three-year-old might be able to say it, an 80-year-old might not be able to carry it out. Thus we must search out our faults and cultivate practice. This is like the eyes and feet depending on each other. If you are able to refrain from doing any evil and refine your practice of the many forms of good, then only if you even if you only only uphold the elementary forms of discipline and virtue, you will be able to avoid sinking down into the levels of animals, hungry ghosts, and hell beings. All right, so let's hold on. Then we lost our total consciousness on that. If you are, if you are able to refrain from doing any evil, and refine your practice of doing many forms of good. Then, if you only uphold the elementary forms of discipline and virtue, you will be able to avoid sinking down into the levels of animals, hungry ghosts, and hell beings. This is even more true if you first awaken to the indestructible essence of the wondrous illuminated true nature, or I'm sorry, true mind, and after that, cultivate to the best of your ability and carry out all the forms of virtuous conduct. No one should be deluded about cause and effect. You must realize that the causal basis of hell and heaven is all formed by your own inherent mind. You must keep this mind balanced and equanimous, without deluded ideas of self and others, without arbitrary loves and hates, without grasping or rejecting, without notions of gain and loss. Go on gradually nurturing this for a long time, perhaps 20 or 30 years. Whether you encounter favorable or adverse conditions, do not retreat or regress. Then you will come to a juncture, or then when you come to a juncture between life and death, you will naturally be set free and not afraid. As the saying goes, truth requires sudden awakening, but the phenomenal level calls for gradual cultivation. I often see those who are trying to study Buddhism just use their worldly intelligence to sift among the verbal teachings of the Buddhist and ancestral teachers, trying to pick out especially wondrous sayings to use as a conversation piece to display their ability and understanding. This is not the correct view of the matter. You must abandon your worldly mentality and sit quietly with the mind silent. Forget entangling causes and investigate with your whole being. When you are thoroughly clear, then, whatever you bring forth from your own ex inexhaustible treasure of priceless jewels is sure to be genuine and real. So first, you must awaken to the fundamental and clearly see the true essence where mind equals Buddha. Detach from all false entanglements and become free and clean. After that, respectfully practice all forms of good and rouse great compassion to, be, to bring benefits to all sentient beings. In all that you do, be even and balanced and attuned to the inherent equality of all things. Be selfless, selfless and have no attachments. When the wondrous wisdom manifests itself and you penetrate through to the basic essence, all your deeds will be wonder-working. Thus it is said, just manage to accept truth. You won't be deceived. Make enlightenment your standard. And don't feel bad if it's slow in coming. Take care. The Original Person The great teaching is basically quite ordinary. 
It is easy to enter for those with sharp faculties and quick wits and broad penetration who don't use their intellectual brilliance to try to comprehend it. The usual problem is, if you are overloaded with conditioned knowledge and arbitrary views, then when you try to approach this source, the more you delve into it, the farther away you get, and the more, or, sorry, and you are completely unable to penetrate through. If you are economist toward everything, including the ultimate ungraspability of the mind itself, and your conditioned mind fades away and spontaneously comes to an end, then the perfect illumination of inherent nature appears whole without needing any contrived efforts to make it. You cut off the flow and experience profound realization. When you neither uh, go too far nor fail to go far enough, then you arrive at the naturally real working essence of the mind. This is what is meant by the saying, set to work on the mind and the matter is decided. If you always let this naturally real essence appear amidst your daily activities, then how could you not be settled and secure? When the ancients awakened to mind, you can't even see me at all. <laughs> nee, 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 nee. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. When the ancients awakened to mind, they awakened to this mind. When they achieved its working potential, they activated this working potential. They were able to stay free and at ease for 10,000 generations without changing. They stood forth transcendent an independent realization and no longer place themselves in opposition to anything. If you are in opposition to anything, then this creates duality. Then you are stuck with self and others and gain and loss, and you are unable to walk upon the ground of reality. If you take it a step further, not a single thing is established. After that, you are quiet and properly attuned. And you clearly see the original person. You get rid of all the concerns in your breast and the mental moment that's before your eyes so that your whole being is liberated and at peace. You are, forever, beyond any possibility of retreating or regressing. You attain fearlessness. And with expedient means based on this fearlessness, you can rescue sentient beings. You must continue to be this way without interruption forever. This is the best. And that is to, this is this time. See you in a minute.